Today, we are going to be building a door that when you enter the trigger, opens up and anyone else can enter this trigger and it's still going to stay in this exact position. And once everyone has left the trigger, it will close. Now, in the past, we've done this, but we did this by counting and it turns out there's a way easier way to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is go into build mode. The first thing we need to do is make a trigger and a door and the door has to have an invisible hinge. And so let's go ahead and start over here. We're going to go grab just a simple block and we're also going to go to our gizmos tab and grab a trigger. Now that our trigger fills the entire space and we have our single pane door, let's paint our door, but then we want to duplicate it. So I'm going to grab from the center. So I've got snapping on. And then I grab from the center point here so that I can duplicate and make sure it's perfectly aligned. That means this will be the center when I group them. But before we group, opening the properties panel on the left side, I can then turn visibility off. I can make sure collisions are turned off. You'll also note that light and shadow is turned off so it's not casting shadows. So I'll go close that and we'll group them together. And now this grouping will rotate along this point. Next, we'll open up our menu, head on over to our gizmos tab and pull out a script gizmo. We're going to go ahead and call this door. And then when world is started, we're going to need to get a couple variables. So let's first define a number variable called time. So this is how long is it going to take to open the door. We're also going to need a object variable called door because this script runs on the trigger. And then we're going to need a rotation variable called origin rotation. And then I like to also do another rotation variable. And this one is called rotate by because you could use this on different doors. So rather than doing like a door that opens this way, you could also have a garage door that opens this way or a whole variety of doors. So we'll get into that in just a moment. Now we are going to go to our values tab, grab the set to drag that over and then grab our origin rotation. So on world start, we set the origin rotation, go to your operators tab, scroll down to objects and grab rotation of object and the rotation of the object door. So now we have saved the current rotation that it starts at the world start. And then we go to our events tab and normally our trigger events are down here under player events, but this trigger event is kind of hidden. So if we go to when event is received, we can drop two of these in here. You then click on the my event drop down, grab occupied and under the other one, we're going to grab empty and these fire one time when the player first enters and one time when the, the entire trigger is empty. So if you have one player enter, it'll go off when that first player enters and it will not go off until all the players have exited. But because this is received with the player ID, we do need to click new parameter, go drop down for player and type in PLID. That's because when a trigger is entered, it is entered with a player ID. So we'll just go ahead and fill that out. Perfect. All right, now that we have that set up, the next thing to do is come on over to our motion tab and we're gonna go to motion over time and grab rotate two over time. Now rotate by is not a good one to use when you're trying to get exact positions like a door. And so that's why we are saving the origin rotation because it allows us to create our own rotate by, which I'll show you in just a second. But we're gonna grab origin rotation and when empty, we want to go to our origin rotation. So we drop origin rotation here in the center. The time is not one second, it's going to be, and we'll fill this out here, three seconds. And so we'll grab time of three and put that here on the time slot as well as here on this time slot. And we're not rotating self, we are rotating the door. So we'll go ahead and drop the door here and there. And then not to 90, so we wanna go close that out, go to our operators tab at the very top. You're gonna to see a plus sign here. And then we drop the plus sign, head on over to our variables tab, grab origin rotation, plus rotate by. Now it's very important to note that whenever you are rotating with an origin rotation, the origin rotation must be on the left side. Now, normally when we think of a plus symbol, we think of it being that you can add them in any order, but that's actually not the case with rotations. Rotations order really matters. And so you always add origin rotation first and then the amount second. Otherwise it flips it in the opposite direction. Just remember origin rotation goes on the left. The last thing to do is figure out how much are we rotating by. So if we come down to our object here and put our hand in the top, we'll see this red symbol, which is the X symbol is opened up and we want to rotate 90 degrees on our X. So if we come down to our rotate by, we need to know that it's X, Y, Z. So we can type in 90 degrees here, press enter, and then we'll close out of that. And then you'll also note, here's our trigger. When we open up our trigger, we can attach the script door 
And when you look at the attach script door, we could adjust the rotate by down here to be different. So if we wanted to have a door that goes another direction, we can do that on the trigger itself. Now that we have this open, we do need to reference in the door. So let's go ahead and open up the door, grab the grouping and drag that down here into the empty slot. Perfect. And now with this setup, we should be able to try it out. So we'll come down here and we'll go ahead and enter it. There it goes. So it's opening 90 degrees and then it's going to stay open until we leave. And now that there's nobody in it, it closes. Pretty cool and it'll work both ways. If you wanted this to open in the opposite direction, you'd use negative 90 degrees. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask and we look forward to seeing you in the horizon. Bye. All right, let's go for some extra credit. So you remember we were talking about origin rotation being in a separate slot than our additional rotation for how much we're rotating by? Well, the reason origin rotation needs to go in the first slot is because you see this, see how this is rotating so perfectly? In fact, I can just pick it up and rotate it like this and it's still rotating perfectly. And if I put it down like this, it's still rotating perfectly. Well, if we swap these out, and we say move our origin rotation here, move this rotation here, then move origin rotation back here, and then we'll fill this back out. Okay, now look at this. It's not rotating correctly, and this is bewildering. It blew me away the first time I saw this. I was like, this, is, this doesn't make sense. And if I move it, and we move it into a different position, it rotates in a completely different direction, and it doesn't make sense, right? It's very confusing. And so let's come back over here to our script, and I'm just gonna hit the undo button to bring it back to its original there we go. Perfect. And now it's working fine. I mean, if you uh, <laughs> put it back up, right? But now you can see it's working just fine. So I've got this example here made by Waffle Copter. So thank you to him for showing us this. But what you can see here is that this rotation rotates to here. So if you were to take this object and we rotate it by 90 degrees, there we have that. And if we rotate it 90 degrees, now we have this. But see, this rotation is like a plus symbol here. Like this is adding this amount of rotation and then this is adding another rotation. And so if we were to swap these, and so in our script, if we swapped these in the plus symbols and we come down here and we do the exact opposite, you'll see that we now rotate this way and then we do that final rotation this way. And then if we compare them, they're not the same. I mean, our red is sticking down versus red is over there. They're very, very different. And so another really good example of this is our clock example we were just going through. So if we imagine this is over time, this is its current orientation right here. This represents the current orientation and these represent the amount that we wanna rotate by. And so if we consider this time and we go, okay, so this is how it looks without the origin rotation. So like this is what it looks like in the world without any rotation being applied to it. So here it is, but this is what it looks like first. And then you apply this rotation to it. If we put our hand in here, we can grab the blue and then we can apply this rotation and then we can apply this rotation. So say we've got it now at 90 degrees and then we add this rotation to it. Okay, that works. But what if we added another one of these at the end? If we add another 15 degree rotation, what happens is it rotates like that. And that's obviously not what we wanted. We wanted to maintain its origin. And so this has to be set over to here for it to be like that. So if you're not completely following, that's okay. But what this represents is our origin rotation being in the first slot. So it's kind of backwards because this shows it being on the right side, but it's actually on the left side in our script. If we come back to our script, what you're gonna see is when world is started, we set our origin rotation just like before. Now this all runs on the object itself. There is no extra objects. We then send my event to self with a one second delay. My event is a looping event. And so every one second we sent another my event. We then set rotation, which is a number variable to be rotation plus 15. So this is constantly adding upwards. So that's how many degrees are we rotating by. We then rotate self to the origin rotation plus zero, zero, and the number of our rotation over time of one second. And so another way to think about this is that this rotation value is happening in global space. So before the origin rotation is applied, we rotate it in global space, and then we apply where is it currently at. And so it's good to know this because there's instances where you might want to rotate it in a different way. Like the idea of rotating it like that is actually a pretty cool idea and there's some good uses for that. 
I would just encourage you to play around with this. Always remember origin rotation goes in the left slot. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. See you in Horizon. Bye!